going on everybody and welcome in to another edition of the FanDuel hurry up this week talking about the week 11 DFS studs that you should be targeting for your Sunday main slate lineups and before we get into the plays just got to do a little selfish plug here for the brand make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel just hit that like button as well watching the videos watching all the videos as we're putting out the content for you guys to succeed at your DFS lineups your season long lineups your bets we got it all covered for you we appreciate you guys rocking along with us for the youtube channel so let's get into these week 11 plays for you that you guys should be targeting for these main slate lineups we got to start it off like we always do here that's at the quarterback position and we got to talk about my boy josh allen he's been a favorite in this space for quite some time and this guy got going last week against the New York Jets and hadn't didn't even need to do that much when you're looking at only passing for I believe 28 uh 28 attempts that he had there and throwing for over 360 yards I believe I mean absolutely absolute incredible efficiency when you're talking about that's like 13 yards per attempt for him and now he gets to go against an Indianapolis defense that has been you know really bad uh, uh, against opposing uh, been opposing passers you're looking at them giving up I believe 7.7 yards per attempt which is uh, 23rd worst when we're looking at that so definitely Josh Allen finds himself in another efficient spot and then they're also giving up 23 passing touchdowns on the year which is by, which is the league lead uh, league lead as well at that so you're looking at you know hopefully Josh Allen can get going hopefully we're not tilting Matt Breida Zach, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary vulturing those touchdowns for him but just an absolutely great spot you're looking at this indie defense that is top five when it comes to yards allowed to the quarterback position total fan duel points allowed to the quarterback position and then also rushing attempts which I thought was was very intriguing he didn't have to do it last week against the Jets but in the two previous matchups Josh Allen had rushed for 50 or more yards so you're looking at an upside that can come on the ground there and maybe even when they get into the red zone we can see Josh Allen uh, get a score or two this guy has finished in the top five at the quarterback position in five of the last seven games so I think you can use him uh, you can proceed with him in your lineups and use him at will this week when you're building your teams. Got to move on to the running back position here. and We're going to talk about Nick Chubb. Now, Nick Chubb coming in at 9000 is an elevated price tag. And I know you guys might be wondering, hey, we got Christian McCaffrey there that looked absolutely explosive for only $1,000 more um, going against the Washington football team. But we do have Nick Chubb in a favorable matchup here against the Detroit Lions. We just got to copy and paste what I was saying last week about Najee Harrison. I know Najee didn't get there. It was frustrating with Mason Rudolph. Being in that quarterback, they were only one for three when converting red zone opportunities, not getting the work to Najee. And that could maybe change here with Nick Chubb. I know he's kind of struggled in the red zone, only three red zone touchdowns on the year to go along with only 28 rushing attempts, which you're looking at only seven games that he's played as well. And so we're getting him possibly hopefully fingers crossed off of the IR this week I mean if not Dearness Johnson finds himself in a great spot as well this Detroit defense has not been able to stop opposing rushers they're allowing the third most fan duel points per game the second most receiving touchdowns per game to opposing backs and the third most rushing touchdowns here this is an absolute smash spot as Baker's been struggling I think that we can see Nick Chubb kind of take the bull by the horns here and you're loving that without Kareem Hunt uh, set to be activated there we should get around 65 to 70 percent of the snaps for Nick Chubb in this backfield as Dearness Johnson has not been uh, has not been involved too heavily when Nick Chubb has been healthy so I think that we can get a, a huge game here from Nick Chubb granted he gets activated this week and he's going to be a guy that I do look to target even at the nine thousand dollar price tag Lastly, we got to close it up here. No receiver this week. I'm going to move over to the tight end position and let's bring in none other than Travis Kelsey. Now, Tyreek Hill has been a favorite for me in this position. I actually was going back and I have not talked about Travis Kelsey at all in this space all year since week one uh, when he was 8,500. And now we're getting Travis Kelsey at 7,300. And even though he's the highest price tight end, this just feels like a, a missed price. I mean, you know, your Mark Andrews is, is 7,000. 
Johnson. I think George Kittle is 6,800. And, you know, those guys are explosive. But what we're getting out of Travis Kelsey, who's seeing nearly nine targets a game, uh, only five players in the league have, have more than that. Uh, when you're looking at targets per game, that absolutely just a staple of this offense. We know that Patrick Mahomes loves to lean on Travis Kelsey. And if we're getting, you know, the Dallas defense here, they're an aggressive man defense. If they're able to get home, Patrick Mahomes has struggled uh, under pressure this year where he had exceed, exceeded in that spot the past couple of years. I think we could see Travis Kelsey be a security blanket and even up those targets that much more but you're looking at red zone efficiency as well too he's the only tight end in the league with four more red zone targets and 100% catch rate so this guy is just a magnet for the football when it comes into the red zone and scoring there and then you I mean you're just looking at a Kansas City team first of all the reason I like Travis Kelsey this week is he's in that late game so you could be looking at you know absolutely not only skyrocketing teams who maybe paid for a cheaper tight end but then also just getting a lot of equity in the afternoon game while most people might might already be done and then you're looking at you know okay so the game is expected to you know 56 I think is the over under in this game points are scoring in bunches so and this guy just does not leave the field him and Tyree Kill have combined for 1173 of the Kansas City offensive snaps okay let's look at the next three pass catchers on this team Demarcus Robinson Miko Hardman and Byron Pringle they've combined together for 1146 so I mean Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill are just the two guys and when you can get exposure to this offense at only $7,300 I, I definitely have to do it with Travis Kelsey this week I hope that he reigns in big for us that's going to do it for the week 11 DFS studs edition of the FanDuel. Hurry up, guys. Like I said, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. We got all the content for you guys to succeed DFS season long with your bets as well. Uh, I hope to catch you guys on the Sunday show. I won't be doing the Sunday show this week, but do, doing the Sunday show all season long here on the FanDuel channel where we're talking best bets on our countdown to kickoff show. So make sure you guys uh, tune in for that and make sure you guys tune in next week for the week 12 DFS studs edition. Until then, good luck, get this money. Peace.